Welcome back to Deep Dive with Dr. Cat. In this video, we're going to cover time series forecasting and only a couple of techniques. Specifically, we're going to look at simple moving average and we're also going to look at exponential smoothing. There is one more kind of moving average called a weighted moving average. Uh, we're not covering that in this video. Today we have a sample problem in forecasting the sales of Pokemon collector cards. Let's say hypothetically somebody's been tracking the sales of Pokemon cards for five years and wants to predict these number of sales for the sixth year. So we can use simple we can use a simple three-year moving uh, average in order to calculate based on a three-year time period the forecast for the final year that is listed as a question mark. We have in this problem given to us the three year moving average, not because it's the standard way of calculating, but because this is just a hypothetical. And for simplicity, we're choosing a small-ish number in order to run the averaging. That's the first a uh, problem that we're going to try to solve, which is using a simple moving average. The problem tells us we're going to have five years of data to work with, and we are going to calculate the sixth year, and we are given this time period of three years. The other problem that we'll, we'll work on next is to use exponential smoothing, which is another technique, and that we are given a couple different uh, data points. One is the alpha figure, the alpha number for the smoothing constant, and then also we have the first forecast from some expert in this domain space. So that is a different problem with a different formula. So we're going to look at two different formulas here. In order to solve this, I'm going to be using Excel and we will copy over these numbers into the Excel spreadsheet. And what I'm going to do is just double check to make sure that it is indeed numbers that are represented in these fields. I'm not sure why that copying pasting it will lead to extra spaces and that is something we don't want. So the value for the sixth year is not provided because that is the number that we want to calculate. So let's go with the simple moving average first and let's take a quick look at the formula for that. I've turned over to my notepad so that I can describe to you how the simple moving average works. Let's say for instance, we've got year one, year two, year three, we've got different numbers. So let's say we have a scatter plot and we have for each year, and so forth. For each year, this is not going to look at all like the regression. Each year is going to be a different value of sales that's provided in our problem. So the problem itself, it stated that in year one, we had 450 sales. So we'll just say 450 is about there. Then the next year was a little bit more, closer to 500. And the following year was 518, which is maybe a little bit more than that. And then it rose steadily and so forth. So each year was a growing amount. And it's not quite a regression model because we're not interested in the year being an independent variable affecting 
the sales. We're just seeing over time, what's the pattern and can we predict from that? So going back to this idea of a three-year average. So if we were in between year three and year four, like we're just starting out year four, we might be wondering how do we know what to expect? If we had some expert telling us that we should look at a three-year time period, we're going to be looking at um, three years of data, all right, and then we're going to find the average for the fourth year. So here we have in the spreadsheet, these three numbers for the first three time periods. So what we're interested in is the average based on those three numbers. So we're going to get this, all right. Um, an average is the sum of the number of items you want to add up and then divide by that number. So this is going to be 1463 divided by three, which will give you an average of eight, 487 uh, and the, the and some change. Um, so let's maybe make it a little bit easier to read. Let's do that, two decimal, two points after the decimal. So that would be for calculating, I'm so sorry, I got this wrong. I put this in the wrong row. This is for the fourth year, so it should not be a JSON that I had before. It should be like this, okay? So now if I want to project and forecast for year five, I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste this, and this is going to take year two, three, and four. So just going back to the little diagram that I had started sketching out, so this is average for the first forecast that we can make. Right, so what do we want next to forecast year five? We want that to forecast and then we're gonna keep moving forward and so forth and so on. So how do we get this one? This one is gonna be based off of the three years right before. So if we go back to our spreadsheet now, we are going to be looking at the average of the three years before, which is going to give you 555. So that's how we would get the demand for year six. Uh, this is the demand. Okay, so now forecast the demand. So now we can move on to the second problem, and that is where we can look at the exponential smoothing. Exponential smoothing, oh wait, actually, sorry, before I jump into that, let me go back to here and then just say the, the math formulas for a moving average. So your moving average is going to be the sum of demand, which is the sales uh, in previous n periods over the n for the n periods. So we, we have a way to calculate, uh, not calculate, but uh, represent this in a mathematical expression. 
So if we're calculating here the forecast year and we're saying six, then we actually want everything from F5, F4, and F3. We're going to add those up and divide by N. What we're going to do to represent this is to give it the variable T plus one. That way we can go with the value from the period, the last period, adding the value from the period before, and also the value right before that. And then we're going to divide that over n. So this is the mathematical formula for calculating the moving average. Um, this is how you would express it in a equation mathematical expression. All right, so now we can move on to the uh, exponential smoothing. Our, our formula that we're going to be using now is going to look a little different. One of the perks of using exponential smoothing is that you don't have to keep track of an n number of time periods. You only have to keep track of the previous one because each forecast for each subsequent period depends on the last one, which depends on the one before and, and et cetera, and so on. So instead of f of t plus one equals three of the last, we only look at the past one and we use the alpha constant to talk about the value that was predicted from the last period, or no, the actual value and we subtract the forecasted value from that to get the difference between actual and predicted value. Um, so that's multiplied by each other plus the amount that is forecasted. So that would be for the current one. So going back to this chart, that will look a little bit more like this value is dependent on this value 5 and then it would also depend on the value uh, from, from this year, which is going to be 584. So, and it's also denoted as Y of five, because Y is for the demand uh, or the Y axis uh, uh, variable. Okay, so going back now to Excel, we can now calculate the exponential smoothing. We're going to use the alpha value of 0 0.3, because that's what the problem gave us. And we're also going to calculate now uh, with the first value that's provided to us is 410. This is what our problem told us. This is what you should start with. So I'm going to do that so that we can have something to view as that's what's provided to us. All right, so now our formula was to multiply the last forecasted value and Add the constant value, which we can use F4 to make a constant, multiplied by the difference between the actual value minus the forecasted value. All right, so then we could click and drag that all the way to the end, and this is the forecasted value for year six. So that's how we would get the forecasted values. And this is how you would be able to compare the two different approaches uh, between simple moving average and exponential uh, average. So these are the two values that we've come up with for predicted values. So let's say exponential forecasted demand also. 
and these are both um, the forecast values that we would compare with the actual values. So one thing to note is that the actual values do not extend all the way forward, whereas the forecasted values can extend forward. And so now with the forecasted values, uh, we have the ability, like once we have year six with the actual values, then we can go ahead and continue forward with the forecasting. Uh, because this is just a textbook problem, we're just going to stop right there. And then the next things that we're going to look at in a different video would be how to measure the, um, the accuracy of this averaging method. And we're also going to have another video on the weighted moving average. Uh, one thing that I thought I would try to do is graph these on a line chart, time series chart. Mm, let's try line chart. Okay, so that uh, gives you an indication that um, I think graphically it's a good way to show that with the simple moving average, you kind of lose out on, you can't predict uh, that early on. You don't have that much left over to do a analysis of which one's correct. And then also I think with the um, exponential smoothing method, although you can start earlier to forecast, you know, maybe if you needed a longer time period to see how things are fluctuating um, to remove the trends from the equation, um, you know, that may be a nice, uh, or sorry, uh, the exponential smoothing may not be able to accommodate the rise and fall so much to see um, a broader, or re to remove that sort of broader view. Uh, but I did want to point out here that you can quite easily see that the um, forecasted values are right there. And it is a way to be able to predict in the future what's going to happen. Uh, okay, so that was it. That was all we had to cover today for this simple moving average and exponential smoothing. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Let me know if you have any comments, any questions, and thank you again.